Form Next 2023 at the Coprint booth with my friend Omer. Hey, man. Hey, Joel. Nice to be here. Great to be here. This is exciting because a lot of people are really, really interested in this. Coprint, I know you have this Kickstarter. You're a hardware person. You're a That's hardware right. startup, and I love seeing that. So. Tell me about all of the cool stuff you have of right course. here. Of course, that's nice to be here. And here we have uh, Ender 3 V2. Here you will see the chroma pad is the brain of the machine that's replacing it, actually. Yeah, it's very much not a stock machine. It's not. It's <laughs> not. We change it a lot. But it's basically run by chroma pad, and chroma pad is actually based on clipper. But we revised that clipper so it can have multi extruder abilities and also we have to be sure that it catches up with the speed as well. Okay, so, well, so that chroma pad there, that is now the brains of this Ender 3. That's right. And to make it easier, we wanted to create a brand new setup wizard so it can be user friendly, you know, so everyone can use it. <laughs> okay, so you made clipper user friendly. That's right. Actually, we wanted to achieve that because we know that it might be hard to control all of the features that Clipper brings, but I mean, we wanted to respect the open source of it as well. That makes sense. Well, Clipper, as, as, a, as a firmware that runs machines, it's not inherently controlling multiple extruders, right? That's correct. So, we wanted to make sure that everyone who touches our screen can solve out things easily. First, it asks you which printer you are going to use our system. Okay, you so it has a setup wizard for people exactly. who aren't familiar. It then, once you connect it, all you have to do is the plug the extruders and the head. Then, it understands which extruders are on there. You now, the extruders up top, I see Coprint on there. Does that mean, so the Chroma Pad, does it come with extruders or do people have to supply their own? The thing is that, first, we wanted to make sure all products can go standalone. But the main point is that we want to bring Chroma Pad into the Chroma Set. So, the set is Chroma Pad, Chroma hat and four CX1 extruders. Okay. This makes a whole set. But the extruders themselves, people can supply their own, is that right? Actually, yes. We wanted to make sure that they use like dual drive and the grip should be strong because they are like, it's pushing and that should pull, so everything should go perfect. Well, there's, there's a lot of filament going back and That's, forth, and so yes, you do exactly. need extruders that have proper grip. But, I mean, if they don't want co-print extruders and they have some Bontech extruders laying around, they could use those. Feel free to go. I Excellent. Mean. So we want it to be modular and budget. So I in like case that. you have a lot of extruders at home, I know you have, so I have feel free to yeah. go with that. <laughs> <laughs> even though the brain is strong and it has a strong processor inside of it, even stronger than the Raspberry Pi, we had to sh make sure that everything goes smooth on the head. Therefore, we just didn't want to stop with the pad. We wanted to bring the head on the game as well. Inside of the Chroma head, there is like a servo motor controlling the filament cutter. So basically, when it's changing uh, the color, the filament cuts. Well, I think that seems to be one of the advancements lately in doing filament changes for color is instead of tip shaping and retracting, you're, you're sacrificing a little bit, a tiny little bit of filament uh, above the cold zone, yep. and then you're cutting it and then feeding new stuff in. That's right. The main issue here is that once you're retracting a color and pushing the next one in, the hot end gets cold a bit. And once that happens, tip of the filament gets a bit larger, so it clogs the nozzle. Uh, we want okay. to solve that. That makes a lot of sense. Basically, it has two stock fans airing the print here, so we make sure that print goes smoothly. Okay. And then one fan inside of it, so it can basically cold the hot end inside of it. Instead of relying on mechanical motion to trigger a cutter, you have a tiny little server motor in there doing the cutting. Exactly. And so. The head doesn't have to travel as much in order to do the operation of changing no. filaments for color. That's no. pretty handy. That's right. Basically, the also the hot end, I should mention about the hot end as well. We co-branded with Fetius and we, okay. cre we created a multi-material hot end inside of the head. So anyone who purchased the head, it will come with a Fetius hot end. Well, I guess, what did you change in order to make it? Because I know Fetius makes great hot ends. Was yeah. there a specific piece of functionality that it was missing for this application? Yeah, we wanted to make sure that the nozzle height is a bit longer and the heat seemed to be a bit wider. Okay, okay, just in case there is any sort of expansion in the filament, That's right. it's not going to have as, uh, it's not going to clog as much, right? That's right. Yeah, we still have the perch lever, right? I mean, well, you have to, too. That dirty secret of multicolor okay. 3D printing is I mean, when you're putting it through a single nozzle, you have to purge some material. But the thing is that once you cut the filament, it just goes to the perch tower, 
and cleans, cleans the previous color. And okay. the whole filament change duration takes around 20 to 25 seconds, which is very fast. And then it comes back and ex extrude the upcoming print like that. Well, the model that actually is printing right now looks yep. fantastic. Yep. And there's a lot of really small detail that has to be reproduced, and it looks like your head is doing it. That's actually a really a good testament to what you've done because you're utilizing the Ender 3 motion platform, mm -hmm. which, you know, i3, bed slinger, mm -hmm. uh, so you do have to deal with that, but there's a lot of smarts in that head, it mm -hmm. seems like, with that servo motor, controlling the cutter, and the ability to take multiple filaments, and the, the co-branded Fetus Hot Fetus. End. There's and BL Touch. And, oh, and a BL, <laughs> BL Touch, too, too. okay. Yeah. Let's give an example about what we generally do in our office about the perch towers. Oh, the perch Here towers, okay. Here it comes. Look at this, that. This is the real print, right? This is what someone would slice up in the slicer software, exactly. correct? That, and, and what I have here is the tower. same. Oh, this is the purge tower. That I is see the what you're tower. saying. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. okay. Exactly, so that's what we do at our office. So in case any user wants to like sell those kind of stuff, here's the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, can I see this for a of sec? Course. This is a really interesting concept for someone who wants to utilize your hardware to create product for sale because this is the product that they want to sell. Yep. And you know, multicolor products are going to sell better. Yep. But what do they do with all the waste? Well, they can actually utilize this and create purge models or sample models and still make some revenue from the material that would have been a waste otherwise. That's true. And when we go throughout like the purge, like purge tower and all the colors, it doesn't mean we only change the color. Oh, so, so it's not just multicolor. We're not just four types or whatever of PLA. No. We can actually do other materials. Yes, we can do other materials as well. I mean, we have some examples there to show you. Oh, I recognize this. So here you see four different materials. Okay, show them to the me. The black ones are the carbon. Okay. The gray areas are the standard PLA. Standard PLA. And the bottom of it is ABS. Oh, this is ABS. Yep, and here we have the TPU. Okay, so the tires in TPU weren't printed at the same time as the body, I don't believe, they, right? They didn't, we didn't print it at the same time, but, but there was like three different parts in that project. And this was all through the same nozzle. Same nozzle. Now, one of the things that I'm, I'm always worried about, and maybe you can kind of quell my fears, mm -hmm. is multi-materials coming out of the same nozzle because of different melt temperatures. Mm -hmm. I know ABS melts much higher temperature than Definitely. PLA, and TPU has a different temperature profile. So is there a limit to the materials that we can put in, or do you have to find things that kind of melt in the same range? It kind of needs some mastery, that's for sure, but what we tell here is that the head allows 350 degrees. So you can go up to 350 degrees without any issues. Wait a minute, 350? 350. We're 350. talking about uh, PC blends and nylons as yeah. well. Yeah, it might be like, it kind of depends on what you are going to print, uh, but the issue is that we couldn't reach up to the level of peak yet, uh, <laughs> but the TPU... I don't know if you would want to yeah. do peak on an Ender 3, I'm no, just I saying. Don't, you know? I don't think so, I mean, but if you want to push them, it's, try it, or maybe you'll... Who knows? Issue it, yeah. But if we had multiple nylons within the four extruders mm -hmm. up top, we could do a multi-colored nylon print with your extruder. You can do that, yeah. No problem. Yep. But ABS and PLA, TPU, PLA, very similar-ish melt yeah. enough. But I mean, you, the quality on this is fantastic. Yeah, that's it what looks we really, recommend. really, I mean, really good. Yeah. Here, just I wanted to mention another product that users can push the limits. Okay, well, by under three, we're going to talk about something else now. Oh, what is this? ACM, Extended Chroma Module. Extended the Chroma, chroma module. module. Now, the connectors on this I recognize as motor connectors. That's right. And I see a USB-C port here, and I would imagine this plug connector is for power. Right. Is this for more? That's for more, yeah. The thing is that we wanted to keep the default in four extruders. So, in case a user wants to push the limits, here we go. They will buy additional ECMs for extra extruders. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said ECMs. Like, yes. Okay, so default is four extruder configuration. Yep. If you add an ECM, that's up to four, four more. more. And you can buy up to four ECMs. That means 16 extruders plus four on the default. 20 extruders. 20? 20. Yep. 20 extruders? Yep. 20 different colors 20 or 20 different, different materials for that's some right. reason. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's really cool. No, I like that you're extending that ability and letting the users decide whether yeah. or not they want it. Exactly. And uh, with 20 different PLA colors, I would imagine the purge block becomes, or the purge model becomes quite large. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we have something over here next to the chroma pad, though, yeah. and it looks different. Can we talk about that? Of course. 
the main difference here is that, you know, that's a non-clipper printer. Right. And here we have a clipper-based 3D printer. Oh, this is a, a Neptune 4. 4 Pro. Yeah. And it's running clipper. That's running so, clipper, yeah. Oh, so a, a Chroma pad, which has clipper, would be redundant in this case. Exactly. Oh, and so you have a solution. We have a solution. We have clipper Chroma module for that. And this is actually for the users who own clipper-based 3D printer. And it comes as a cheaper option because they don't need the pad. Oh, so, well, the pad has touchscreen functionality and the ability to change things exactly. and all that kind of thing. But with Clipper, they already have a touchscreen with advanced functionality. Can the screen on this Neptune 4 Pro actually control your module? Completely. <laughs> that's okay, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. And also, as we spoke in our Chroma set, they can control it remotely as well. It's their option. And if the user knows how to use Clipper on a high level, you know, their kind of users. Yeah. They can add up macros and so on their existing pad. Oh, so all of that is those advanced clipper features that are available in machines that are yeah. running it, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, and okay. it doesn't only stop there. I mean, let's say that, okay, you purchase some Krell to 3D printer and you purchase the Sonic pad or any third party clipper pad. Okay? Just keep using your pad, but just plug the key CM to your existing pad, and here you go. So even even third party clipper. Pads. installations yeah. or clipper pads or whatever, they actually work with this too? Yes, they do. You've really thought about a lot. That's yeah. actually fantastic. We wanted to bring out the whole set for everyone, so. Yeah, absolutely. Are, everyone has their own budget, I mean. They purchased a lot of stuff in the previously and they're looking for new options, right? Yeah. We wanted to make sure they reach out to the correct product. Well, what I really like what you've done here with your hardware is you've not only enabled extended functionality on older platforms, mm -hmm. like the Ender 3 motion system, it's a bed slinger, mm -hmm. but I mean, there's it's still a valid platform yep. and you've, you've made it perform mm -hmm. really well. You've got a new head on there mm -hmm. with a lot of advanced functionality. And you said you've got extruders, but people can bring their own. Bring their own, yeah. And then for the newer machines that are coming out, such as this uh, Neptune 4 Pro or other clipper-based mm -hmm. 3D printers, you actually have a slightly less expensive solution That's for them. True. And it's completely controlled with that. And advanced clipper users are not left in the dark. Yep. That's amazing. Actually, yep. that's a really thoughtful offering. I adore you. Omer, there's going to be a lot of people out there really interested in what we just talked about. So look in the camera right there and let them know where they can go to find out more. So we are currently live on Kickstarter and you can find out all of the details about our products in the Kickstarter by just entering Coprint in the search area. Also, you can make sure that you can find our website at coprint3d.com. You have all the information there. You have a lot of forms to contact us. And also you can learn about the, our upcoming products and upcoming projects. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in and co-print all the things. There we go. There we go. And as always, high five. <laughs>